Well, now to a case of justice denied. Yesterday, we introduced you to a Fergus woman whose sexual assault case was dismissed due to court delays. Her story has since sparked outrage with many across the province calling for change. In part two of that story, CTV Jalou looks at the reasoning behind the controversial case and has reaction. She joins us live in studio with more on this tonight. So, CJ, what has happened since the victim went public with her story? Well, Alex, politicians have picked up the call urging against any funding cuts to the judicial system. Local support groups for sexual violence victims say it's an administrative problem that can't be fixed by just dollars and cents. I had been so isolated and I had felt so alone. Nearly two years after Emily Ager reported allegedly being raped in her own home, she says justice has not been served. In my mind, the system is set up to protect us um, and to provide justice, right? And it failed. It completely failed. Her sexual assault case in Toronto was plagued by staffing shortages that caused courtroom closures. Ultimately, her case was dismissed simply because it took too long. So they came up with this 18 month time limit and if a case goes beyond that from when time a person is charged until when the trial finishes, the case will be stayed. This president was sent in 2016 when the Supreme Court of Canada ruled on a case called RV Jordan, focused on ensuring Canadians a right to a speedy trial. An accused can file a Jordan application, which if granted by a judge would stay the charges. We really need to make sure that sexual assault cases are prioritized in our system. The Sexual Assault Support Centre of Waterloo Region says only 6% of sexual assaults are reported to police. Out of 33 cases reported to police, they say only 12 will end up with charges being laid, 6 will be prosecuted, and only 3 will result in conviction. The centre wants to see changes to the judicial system so that not all cases are treated the same. There has to be an understanding of how hard it is to come forward, how hard it is to go through that process. In an interview with CTV speaker Emily of Fergus, Ontario, the survivor was devastated. Egger's story has since sparked debate in Queen's Park. Speaker, what does the Premier have to say to Emily and all the survivors seeking justice after allowing their rapists to walk free? In a statement to CTV News, a spokesperson for the Attorney General calls the courtroom closures unacceptable, adding, we will continue to recruit and onboard new staff to support this courthouse and to ensure victims have access to justice and that offenders are held accountable. That includes $6 million in additional funding and pay increases for over 1,500 Ontario staff. For me, there, there's no amount of money that can make this go away. As Agar puts the pieces of her life back together, she pictures a bright future. Some days are great and some days are dark, um, but I think throughout it all, there still is that little flicker of light. Egger's only legal option now is to take her case to civil court to sue her alleged rapist. She has decided not to go down that route and wants to focus on her healing. Alex. Okay, CTV CJ Liu joining us now with part two of the series tonight. Thank you, CJ. If you missed the first part of this two-part series, you can scan the QR code at the bottom left of your screen or go directly to our website, ctvnewskitchener.ca, to see Emily Egger's story.